All right, students, we are on topic two, returning to civilization. Uh, before I talk about that, I'm going to talk about some facts. We're going to take a look at the world o meter, talk about some of these things, and then we're going to talk about what it's going to take to actually return to civilization and what it might look like. So if we take a look at our world o -meter, USA, we're at a total caseload of about close to 800,000, close to a million. And let's scroll down and look at this graph. Because we went home on May 13th with 2,183. And at that point, we felt it was pretty horrific, right? The increase was, as we were calculating, about five weeks ago, it's been about five weeks since we've gone home. April, sorry, March 13th, we went home on Friday, and then we did not come back. Uh, and the rate of increase between each day was about times 1.3, right? 68,000 times 1.3, 86,000. 86,000 times 1.3, 120. And basically, it's been changing at that pace up to around April 12th, 13th or so, when uh, around here was when we had several days in which the rate of increase was actually starting to slow down. As we can see, it's not a perfect curve, but we can still see around this range, 13, 14, is when the number of cases was actually starting to slow down. So once we slow down enough, if it ever reaches zero this year, um, then it'll just be a matter of people getting better before the cases following this mouse come down, right? So it'll be this big bell curve all the way around. So where we are along is the peak up here, is the peak down here. It's still very dependent on our current actions. Right now, the projection, I believe, at least the last time I looked at it, is probably around the end of April for most places in the U.S. that started around the same time that we did. With San Diego, because of the low number of initial cases, the peak might actually start a little bit higher. We may have already reached our peak. Again, it's hard to tell without the actual number of real number of cases, because the only definitive number that we really have is the number of deaths. More on that some other time. So anyways, the point is we're not going down. This is not going to go down to zero uh, tomorrow. It's literally not possible. And we have days and days of evidence in the US, weeks and weeks, uh, actually, in the US, you know, months in other countries at this point that points towards this trend of, you know, increasing at times 1.3 until after you implement social distancing. Social distancing, All right? So we know that we're currently in the worst place. It's not just going to get better, right? So if we reopen school right now, if everyone goes back to work and acts exactly the same with no changes whatsoever, um, we're just going to go back to the 1.3 multiplier. Um, that's just literally a fact. If we don't change anything, we're just going to start that. But instead of being at 2,183, we're going to start with 764,636. If everybody just went back to work and life went back to you know, uh, normal. Obviously, that's not going to Um, most optimistic estimates and when we'll reach March 14th. Mr. Yao's not, don't quote me on this, but most likely uh, far into June, if not further. Um, and that's if we do everything perfectly. That's the most optimistic. <laughs> Again, that's Mr. Yao's opinion based on his research and knowledge. Obviously, Mr. Yao could be way off, and he hopes he's way off. And He's just wrong on everything, and we go back to school 
next week. That would be really cool. I mean, honestly, that would be really cool. Um, but the conclusion here uh, from this evidence that we're looking at is that any sixth grader, fifth grader, to understand this, just looking at that graph, um, is that if we don't make changes, then it's not possible unless we have a vaccine, right? A vaccine makes us safe, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so answer some basic questions. Can we open in May? Uh, no. And can we open in August with no changes? If schools and infrastructure and government doesn't make any of change, those changes or demand those changes or take action to make changes, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, we definitely should not be returning to school because again, we will return back to that. Every single day, the number of cases increases by 1.5. The only reason this is slowing down is because of our social distancing. Um, there's no other way for it to slow down unless all of us die, which we don't want that happening, of course. Um, let's see, can we open in August with modifications? Uh, that's a solid maybe. It just really depends on what the government does and also what we can do as individuals, which I'll talk about. So individuals, obviously vaccines are the ultimate answer. If you watch any of my previous videos, a vaccine makes you essentially immune to getting that disease. But without it, what can we actually do, right? Can you imagine living in like the 18th century and this happened? These are just my notes. Um, so I don't know what I was going to talk about then. But without vaccines, we'd have to probably live with this disease for the rest of our lives. It would just be a seasonal thing that gets worse every single time. Uh, not cool. So I want to talk about this term called R0. Pronounce R0, it looks like a R subscript zero. Um, and what R0 is, is basically if you have one person get sick, let's say this is that one person, and these uh, little dots are people, one person gets sick, for every one person, that person will get three more people sick. So we have three people sick. And each of those three people will get another three people sick. Two, one, two, three. And then each of those people will get another three. Okay, Mr. Yao's not going to go through all of that, but you get the point. Everyone's sick. It's horrible, right? We don't want that. So coronavirus has an R0 value that's extremely high, um, at least compared to the other diseases that end up killing people. Uh, so we don't want people to get sick. So what can we actually do? Math, 1, 3, 9, 27. We saw the drawing. So what our government, many governments are implementing is social distancing. We reduce the R0 by increasing the distance between all the people. The distance between each person is so great that it can't be transferred. If, for example, this person, let's see, whoops, got sick. It's too far away, can't reach him. Oh. We're far away enough, we're in our homes. We're, when we go to the grocery store, we stay super far away from each other. This works. It's essentially creating artificial herd immunity, if you've seen the previous video um, about viruses and vaccines. By not shaking hands, by cleaning areas, by increasing that distance, it's much more difficult for any one person that gets sick to get another person sick. So that's what we can do as individuals that's helping. Vaccines, that's true herd immunity. Where you can imagine, let's reactivate this. Because we're all vaccinated, let's say there is one person that wasn't vaccinated for some reason. All None of these people can get sick because they have the vaccine. 
It doesn't matter who he or she interacts with. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. We're chilling. But we don't have that vaccine. It's going to take a while, if you've seen the video. So there is another thing that we can do. And I have a caveat about that. Um, pseudo herd immunity in terms of mask. It's not as good. It's not as good as just being immune. Where if someone coughs in your mouth, you're still going to be okay. Um, it's important to say we don't want to hoard these masks right now because we're all inside right now. We're practicing social distancing. And there is a shortage in the United States and medical care professionals. But what is powerful about this, using masks, if and when we do return to society, when school reopens in August, what will it look like? It may have to look like this. Green circles being masks. Where because a school is an environment where we have to be so close to each other, you know, on the playground, in a classroom with 36 students. I don't know how many dots I drew on here, but it's not even 36. Think about how close you are to one of each other in a classroom. So if someone does happen to get sick, it's going to reduce the likelihood that that person gets a disease. And it's also going to keep the people that maybe aren't protecting themselves just because the pure distance from here to here is greater than no this person doesn't get sick and inherently that person protects this person without a mask again this isn't a situation where masks work perfectly they don't sometimes someone's going to get sick but even if you're sick it's going to be a lot more difficult to get other people sick if you're wearing masks it's still going to these other masks that don't work perfectly are still going to help protect the majority of people. That's what it might look like. But there is an answer in which we may not have to do this pseudo herd immunity as intensely. We may only have to wear masks um, in the classroom, or we may only have to wear a mask because we, during some times of the day, because we split up the classrooms and distribute it different. I don't know what school will look like. There is something schools and governments can do. Because it seems impossible. It does seem super hardcore impossible. Keep social distancing and wear masks. That's crazy. It might have to be a reality if this does happen. Um, if anyone has seen the movie Taken, where Liam Neeson is trying to save his daughter, and he's on his phone talking to the kidnapper. And he says, I have a special set of skills. I will hunt you down. I will find you. Um, that's what needs to happen within our government system. It's called contact tracing. And what contact tracing is, is tracking from the last person was identified and finding every single person they interacted with. and testing them. So that's a lot of testing. So one, you have to be able to test everybody to find this initial person, find this first person. You have to do a lot of testing to find this first person. And then you have to have enough tests and enough resources, the hospital, to chase down every single lead. You have to have treatment facilities and resources so that anyone that's sick has a place to be treated and resources for families that are sick so they don't have to go to work. If this is implemented, then this part as individuals can be taken a lot more lightly. If we're gonna return to school in August, most likely it's gonna be a combination of all of these things because the US, the world, no one is really doing a perfect job. It's kind of impossible to do a perfect job. Um, more testing, contact tracing, using pseudo herd immunity to help protect people, using artificial herd immunity, using social distancing, 
and then you know relying and supporting on our scientists and researchers to provide this vaccine hopefully sooner rather than later um, and that could be in terms of grants that could be in terms of you know just moral support uh, i know for sure when i was working in academia um, really the only areas that had a lot of funding uh, was in regards to cancer and heart research because those are the things that we feel every day we have family and those are great things to be working for but there's a lot of other things that um maybe don't get that level of funding or research or support um which is now we're getting hit pretty hard 